Hey, what's going on everyone? Justin here, and in this video I want to share my favorite six nature reads uh, that I read in 2024. I've already done my kind of top 10 of all the books that I read, but there's a lot of different categories that I read, such as, you know, nature and science and all kinds of history and philosophy and now classics and everything. And it's hard to compare, you know, apples to oranges sometimes. So even though I have that vid, definitely check that one out if you want to come back here because I'm going to be doing all kinds of vids on each of those different categories as well, just to make sure the good books get at least some attention that they deserve. So let's just get started with two honorable mentions and then we'll go on to the top four. So first up, like I was saying, there's kind of a little bit of overlap with like uh, science, you know, nature reads and science by default. I think a lot of nature reads are science books, but uh, this one is Remnants of Ancient Life, The New Science of Old Fossils by Dale Greenwald. And it's a book all about uh, discovering and interpreting uh, different biomolecules from fossils. So, like, you know, fossils and everything like that, obviously, is like nature, more kind of probably like on the sciencey side with kind of the laboratory techniques of, you know, putting them under different kind of different scans and lasers and all kinds of stuff, which I found really interesting, uh, just like learning how scientists actually uh, utilize some of these techniques and tools to get more information. But uh, this book is all about taking new fossils and old fossils and using modern like technologies uh, on them to discover uh, what biomolecules might be present and these are things like uh, you know like proteins uh, DNA pigments all kinds of stuff like that uh, that might still be kind of uh, be able to be detected in some of these fossils so it's really fun learning for example like pigmentation uh, just finding different leaves and stuff that were fossilized after millions of years um, and then you can do certain things to them to kind of expose, uh, you know, uh, the pigments and chlorophyll and different things uh, of that nature to see what colors they actually were. Uh, same thing with dinosaur feathers uh, is kind of interesting. You know, that's kind of like the big hot topic right now with dinosaurs and everything. Uh, kind of learning the different patterning on different dinosaurs based on like, you know, finding out the coloration of the little pin feathers that we've been able to detect. All kinds of stuff like that. So I found it really interesting. It's very heavy on like kind of like the actual research aspect of it, which I found really cool. And kind of one of the opening um, chapters is about uh, different insects and finding, uh, I think it was like the zinc and other like biometals, uh, like in their mandibles and things like that. So I just found it really cool. So this was like, yeah, like this one would definitely, it's probably gonna end up being on like the science one. But uh, like I said, nature books, I think kind of any book on like, you know, ecology or zoology or botany is by default also like a science book. So anyways, like I said, that's why I kind of gave it like more of an honorable mention. Uh, let's see. And the next one up is The Bee, A Natural History by Noah Wilson Rich. And this is from Princeton University Press. And it was a series. I think it is now a defunct series. I think it was just called The Natural History Series. Um, but I'll show you basically the 2.0 version because I have uh, The Natural Lives of Bees right here. But uh, anyways, not to discredit anything from this book, uh, but it's really fun. Uh, you learn all about the anatomy, physiology, um, lots of different photographs and speech at the end here. Um, it used to be, or in the new ones, there's like a bunch of species profiles at the end of every chapter. And then on this one, there's just like a whole slew of them at the end. We learn all about the science, natural history of bees, you know, how they actually go about doing things and whatnot. I found it really cool. Lots of great diagrams. Uh, photos, illustrations, all that kind of stuff as well. What I liked about this one too is it's not just about honeybees. Honeybees definitely take over whenever you're reading about bees, um, but different like um, non-social bees, uh, for example, not all bees, you know, live in big hives and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so a lot of solitary bees, a lot of things like sweat bees and stuff were also included. So I found that uh, really cool as well. And then here's like kind of the, the the next iteration of this series, I think. Um, so I, I'm going to do a whole video probably just on these books because I love them so much. But uh, The Lives of Bees and Natural History of Our Planet's Bee Life. Um, I haven't actually read this one yet. I just got this one um, over Christmas and stuff. But as you can see, it's kind of the same. Jeez, if I could actually flip through a couple of the pages. Same kind of ideas. I just feel like it's just like a step up in quality and that kind of thing as far as like the production value and stuff like that. So uh, anyways, uh, I will be reading this one as well. All right, so now let's get started to my top four. So this one was more or less a vibe. <laughs> I don't, uh, it's David Attenborough's The Life of Birds, which apparently came out with like a new edition or something. I'm not exactly sure if the text is really any different, but what I decided to do with this one when I found out that David Attenborough narrates this book himself, 
uh, I decided to read along uh, while he narrates it to me. So I just had a super relaxing time with tons of great photographs. Uh, as you can see, I want to say this one was like from the early 90s. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. All right, 98. Uh, but still, a lot of really good information. But like I said, it was just a very like calming and relaxing thing listening to Attenborough narrate while I like kind of flipped along and everything. So, uh, like I said, I think I think this one making up so far on the list was definitely because of that aspect of it. But I don't see anything wrong with that. Do you? All right. So next up is an audio book that I did listen to without the physical text, and it is um What Do Bees Think About by Matthew uh, Lero. Uh, I think this is translated out of the French, if I remember correctly. But I've read, I don't know, how many bee books have I read? <laughs> Probably, like, I've, I've got to be in, like, double digits at this point. Um, but this one just really stood out. It's all about uh, different bees and their cognitive uh, skills and, like, decision-making. Uh, and co just, like, just different cognitive abilities, whether that's uh, locating, like, going into really, in, really in-depth on, like, how they actually, like, locate um you know flowers uh, that they can pollinate to get the pollen and yeah that kind of thing trans uh i guess traveling back to the hive but also just kind of different decision making within the hive and then also decision makings on like where to find and build new hives and how that actually works and everything like that i just found it really fascinating a lot of the studies too were super modern like i mean within the last you know five six seven years or whatever like very up-to-date studies uh which i found just uh, just really interesting and i felt like it covered a lot more ground in a shorter amount of space like it was a pretty short audiobook i want to say if i remember correctly i think it was only like six six seven eight hours something like that but i feel like more studies and more things were included in this one than a lot of the other bee books that i've read uh so far so uh like i said if you were into like bee science definitely check that one out for sure and then next up we have thor hansen's hurricane lizards and Plastic Squid, The Fraught and Fascinating Biology of Climate Change. I really enjoy Thor Hansen's writing. I think this is my third or fourth book that I've read by him. And he just does a great job, um, including his own like little vignettes of where he's either studying something on his own in its own way out in the woods or whatever. Um, or little experiments that he's doing with his like son, for example, in this one, kind of starting with uh, uh, the concept of uh, global warming with CO2 and like using like their own <laughs> own stuff in the refrigerator and pickle jars <laughs> and stuff like that. Like he really brings it to life and just shows like how down to earth he is and stuff like that. But this book is all about uh, how different uh, organisms are trying their best to adapt uh, to climate stress uh, and a lot of... Um, comes down to uh, the acronym MAD a lot, which is move, adapt, or die, uh, that a lot of uh, organisms have to kind of like basically utilize to, you know, well, I guess if they die, I guess they're not utilizing anything. That's just kind of like what happens to them. But um, anyways, for example, hurricane lizards in the title, it's referring to uh, um, different anole geckos and stuff um, and how quickly they are adapting uh, how they're like feet and pads and stuff are changing to kind of adapt to hurricane conditions that are much more frequent. Um, and plastic squid is uh, talking about the Humboldt squid, which has started to um, shift its body size and uh, reproduce at a younger age um, and basically uh, become more diminutive in size, which is somewhat common ish for certain sea creatures and that kind of thing. Um, but it's just the way that they have adapted to cope uh, with different stressors. Uh, phenology is also um, a big part of the book, um, which is kind of the study of like the seasonal changes and different uh, species that are adapted to certain things during the year, during the seasons. <laughs> that, that was probably a terrible way of wording it. But for example, uh, birds that migrate, uh, for example, uh, might do it. Uh, either based on the length of the days, for example. So it's always like around the same kind of time periods each year, um, whereas the heat doesn't really affect that too much. And then certain insects that they feed upon that they've kind of evolved to migrate to, which is why uh, migrations from birds generally happen. So they kind of go to like a glut of resources um, for the uh, the new generation and stuff like that. Uh, some insects do it more or less based on the temperatures and stuff. Uh, same thing kind of with... Uh, 
uh, a lot of wildflowers. For example, Thoreau's journals. Um, that was probably one of my favorite chapters is Thoreau's journals um, uh, were looked at and everything. And he had a really good record of just different wildflowers around like Walden Pond, for example. Um, and when they were starting to come into bloom and all that. And how it's basically shifted three weeks earlier compared to his time period. Um, and for those who don't think that makes like much of a difference, for example, with the bird analogy, uh, the migration uh, example, I should say. Uh, you know, if the insect explosion happens a couple weeks before the birds show up, uh, basically they have a rough time finding everything to eat as they have kind of evolved to take advantage of that situation. And for those who think that's not real, like snow buntings are like one of my favorite birds and they are suffering from this. So I don't want to hear it. That's a good example. Look it up. Do some research on your own. Uh, but anyways, like I said, the writing is great. I've read a book, a book on bees. By him. Uh, he's the one called Buzz. Uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, one on feathers and what was the other one that I read? Oh, seeds. Uh, yeah. Uh, so those are all really good ones. I think he has one coming out soon. So definitely check those out for sure. And then my favorite one dealing with like a nature topic is The Secret History of Sharks by John Long, The Rise of the Ocean's Most Fearsome Predators. And I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just trash for anything for the hidden life of or the secret life of. I'm probably gonna pick it up. So uh, apparently that marketing gimmick has just totally worked its magic on me. This is a fantastic book on sharks. It's probably my favorite shark book. Um, I think I've read like three or four of them at this point. Uh, but this book is pretty meaty, but lots of good photographs and diagrams and illustrations shown throughout the work. And this is an entire history of like the evolutionary and natural history of the shark lineage from basically proto sharks all the way down to the modern time period. Um, each each stage is broken into like kind of what was going on with sharks, stuff like that, kind of how they were changing and evolving. But most importantly, how they sort of adapted to almost basically every mass extinction event that the planet has thrown at them. They have uh, come out on top and have kind of made it through and pulled through based on their kind of different adaptations and stuff. So I found that really, really cool. Um, it's kind of sad to see how uh, they've done that over the course, you know, of millions of years. And then a lot of shark populations are declining pretty rapidly due to like kind of like over, mostly overfishing. Um as well as like ocean pollution and stuff like that. So that is super unfortunate. It just sucks, everything like that. But uh, like I said, if you enjoy Shark Week, definitely check this out. Um, a lot of things like anatomy and shark teeth are discussed as well and how uh, that shark teeth are primarily used uh, to kind of identify new species and everything, which I thought was really cool. And I, one, one thing I did really enjoy about this one as well is just how cool and tight knit the shark community, shy, excuse me, shark scientific community seems to be. Um, I don't think it's really common to read about scientists and all these nature books naming species after their friends or other scientists or whatever, but I just felt like there was like on a whole new, like, uh, I don't know, magnitude uh, uh, in this book. There was just dozens of cases where that was the case, or dozens of cases uh, where that was the case. So uh, I just found that really charming, really interesting, and I'm just really, really glad I read it. I think a lot of people, like, sharks definitely get a bad rep for not really great reasons to be honest so i feel like more people should learn uh, and read about sharks for sure so there you have it those are my favorite nature books that i read in 2024 let me know if you read any nature ones and if you enjoyed them leave some comments down below so i can check them out as well there'll be a kind of a more general science one coming out hopefully next week i won't don't count on it per se um also got some history ones and a philosophy one in the works as well so leave some comments down below if you want some of those a little bit faster than the other ones but thank you so much for watching whether you're reading books about nature or not always remember read victoriously